you're on your own journey do it at your own pace what feels right for you this is about authenticity this is about not conforming to anyone else do what feels right for you follow your heart your aligned you know path I really believe in that it's when I realized I wanted to be a life coach I I just knew a hundred percent this is what I wanted to do so if you know what you wanted to then then follow your passion In this week's episode, I interview life coach Ariana Trapani. Ariana and I met several years ago on our blogging journey, and we've kept in contact through the amazing tool that is Instagram. And I've seen her transition from working on a digital online interior design magazine to then becoming an influencer to then training as a life coach and Ariana shares her journey and then we talk about the kinds of areas that she helps her clients with ranging from comparison to imposter syndrome to confidence and self-esteem there are so many gems which i'm sure you'll benefit from hearing and it's so lovely to see how ariana has found her dream career she's just so passionate about helping female entrepreneurs and um, helping them on their way so i hope you enjoy my interview a very warm welcome ariana to the my small business and me podcast Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here, Rona. Well, I'm excited for people to hear your small business journey because you've had several turns and twists along the way to becoming um, a life coach. So would you like to start with your small business journey, please? Wow. Okay. So where shall I start? Okay. So I'm going to start in 2009. I was working a nine to five job as an interior designer, well, as a a design assistant uh, for this residential interior designer, well known in in London. And it was a great learning curve, great experience. But 2009 was the year that I realized, what was the year that I was getting married. And it was the year that I realized that I just didn't think a nine to five job was, was cut out for me. I realized that I wanted to to, to be my own boss. I didn't like people telling me what to do. (laughs) Don't we all? And and I think I struggled a lot with the fact being sensitive and a total empath. These were big struggles for me at the time, especially there was this senior designer that we had a few a few problems with it and I just felt like I was back at school I was being told what to do but in a very condescending way I had um, red scribbles on the things that I wasn't doing right and that brought up so much from my school days that I realized do I really do I really want this why am I feeling so bad about myself and I realized I didn't want that anymore. And I realized, yes, I am a sensitive and empath person, but it's not a negative thing. And I wanted to break away from that. And I didn't know what I was going to do. So when I left, I started a blog, an interiors blog, because I was following quite a few blogs, especially um, from the US. um, And I was just enjoying it, but I didn't think of it as a career. I was, you know, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to work as a freelance interior stylist and I'll just have this blog on the side and I was just blogging about interiors. And then slowly this, I started meeting up with people from this community. That's how I met you, Rona. And it was just amazing. And so many opportunities were coming from this and I never saw myself and I still don't as a writer because you know I was told back in the days at school that my English wasn't very good so I had this belief then here I am writing a blog and so much was coming out 
from it. I was, I was going to events. I was going on, on press trips and I just built the most amazing friendships. And it was all so surreal. And I didn't know where this was going at the time, but eventually in 2011, with two other people, Carol and Daniel, that I met through blogging, we just, I had, I remember I was following um, these American um, interior bloggers that launched their first online um, digital magazine. And I was like, wow, we should do something like that. You know, <laughs> we don't have that. The British um, interior design scene doesn't have that. We could be the first online magazine. And obviously I have no editorial, I had no editorial experience, but I had a good eye and I was very passionate about championing other people, their, their designs. Um, that's what I did with my blog. And I had Carol and Daniel and we all had our unique talents. And so we were pumped. And I remember one evening we organized every month, we had a meetup with all our interior designer friends. That evening, it was just us three, no one else turned up. I remember. So over a glass of wine, we came up with this idea, came up with a name, Heart Home Magazine. That evening, we, you know, we bought the website and that was that. That was the idea and we were doing it. And we didn't really think much of it. We just went for it. And it was amazing. You know, it looking back, it's been the best experience and of, of my life, probably because it. I learned so much and we were out of our comfort zone. We were doing things that we never thought we'd do. And I remember the launch party, we had, we held it at the Conran shop. We had over 200 people come. It was just amazing. Everyone was talking about it in the industry about this, you know, this first digital magazine. It was, it was fantastic. And so much came from it. Um, you know, I gained so much confidence from it. It, it was a huge learning curve for us, for all three of us. And then I remember we were met with a lot of judgment from other, you know, editors from print magazines, but we were, it was us three and we were learning to navigate this and it gave us such a boost and it was just fantastic. And it, it was going really well for quite a few years. Then eventually Daniel left and it was just Carol and I. And then this opened a lot of opportunities for Carol and I. So we were also expanding our own projects. So eventually Carol concentrated on her interior design blog and her um, interior projects. I then created, I well, I rebranded my blog and it became Ariana's Daily and it was, it turned into lifestyle. And I became very much the forefront of it. It was a lot about me, what I was getting up to. And that slowly evolved into a project of its own. So we eventually decided to stop the magazine. We still, Heart Home still runs the blog. We blog about two or three um, times a week. So that's still there. Um, we still haven't found it in our hearts to let go of it. We just don't work as much on it. And then, so I was there and it, doing all this lifestyle um, work. It was fantastic. I was going on press trips. Uh, it, and I was meeting so many people and this was going on for a few years and I was actually I mean I have to say financially I was doing better than when I did Heart Home but it came to a point it was probably around 2017 that I had lost my spark I was not enjoying it anymore I was always about championing other people and then all of a sudden it became a lot about me. And I think I got lost a lot in, in the whole numbers game on social media. That's what happens, especially when the brand becomes you. And, you know, I had brands that wanted to work with me, but it was all based on not just engagement. It was also based on numbers. And there was something about that that just didn't fit. Um, right for me I just wasn't in a good place but I was very lost I was like where am I going to go from this you know I don't have that spark anymore with interiors I love interiors and I always will love interiors but I just don't want to do it for anyone else anymore and I and it was hard to come to that conclusion it was hard to realize 
what I'd always worked for all of a sudden wasn't my passion anymore. And that's when I felt really, really lost. And I remember I was on holiday 2017 and all of a sudden I, I came across this woman and she was a life coach. I was like, what is a life coach? <laughs> I was like, what's that? And I became so intrigued by it. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to get some life coaching for myself. I think this is what I really, really need because I'm feeling lost. And I can't explain this feeling. It was like a light bulb moment. It was like, I can't, ex it was just a warm feeling from my heart. And I realized then this is what I want to do. I want to give something back. I want to become a life coach. And I just knew that's what I wanted. And it was funny because when I mentioned I wanted to be a life coach, I was met with a lot of judgment. And I remember when I announced it, I lost so many followers. And friends who I thought were friends at the time obviously judged me on it. And I think it was really hard for me to navigate away from that. But having a life coach at the time really did help me. But I knew in my heart that's what I wanted to do. So I just continued on my own path. And I realized sometimes family and friends, they mean well, but they don't know what's right for you. Only you do. And I just knew this was my calling. So I enrolled in um, my diploma and yeah, it was the best thing I've ever done. It was fantastic. I've learned so much and I'm, I'm, I keep on learning because I'm, I'm always often on doing more personal development studies, but I just... It's just been an amazing journey, especially self-growth. And it hasn't been easy because I'm starting, I had to start all over again. But I feel like with all the, I gained so much experience from all my past jobs that they've helped me so much with my self-confidence. They helped me so much with the courage, getting over the fear and and moving on and that's something that I used to really struggle with back at school I didn't follow my path straight away because of my self-confidence so finally I was free I felt free to really follow that path that I believed in even though no one else around me did um, except for my husband obviously <laughs> but it was just so nice it was very liberating and I haven't looked back even though, you know, that don't get me wrong, there's always struggles when you start a new business, there's always self doubts, they're, they're never going to go away. But it's about not letting them control you and carrying on. So that is, I would say my journey in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to where I am at now, in this moment in my life. It's really interesting that so many I would say out of all the people I've interviewed so far, there's only one person who hasn't changed career. And yeah. that do you, are you finding that with your clients now that you have? I, a lot of my clients that come to me do feel lost. So, it, I mean, there's, there's a real variation, you know, there can be, I've had an actress, I've had interior designers, stylists, I've had people in the corporate world wanting to change careers. I've had people that want to start a new business, especially online, but don't have the courage or confidence to do it. I've had people that have wanted to change careers, but again, are too scared. Or I have had people that know what they want. They're in their career, but their self-doubts, their self-confidence is stopping them from progressing. So they're feeling a little bit stuck. So it is a really nice range of clients, but a lot of them are usually in the creative field. I guess you attract your tribe, as I say, and I feel like I attract those kind of clients who come from creative spaces or who like someone that's quite calm. And because I feel like that's very much my vibe. That's who I am. You know, if someone's looking for a life coach who's very loud and bold and that's not me <laughs> I think you can understand that and see that from from my branding from what I give out 
on social media. So there is a wide range, definitely. So I know not everybody is the same, but lots of small business owners suffer with lack of confidence and that whole thing with especially with online is putting yourself out there so many for example of my Instagram for Floris online course students mm. are they need a little bit of persuasion put it that way to put a photo of themselves on their grid and and even more so to talk on camera what sort of advice would you give to someone if they're there's fear there of, of putting themselves out there well the fear is really really normal and i think it's important to realize that fear that's something that will never go away and that's something that's normal to have it's when it the fear starts to control you that's where there's a bit of a problem and that's where you're not going to grow or you're not going to progress so i think i if I have to give advice, it would definitely be, firstly, confidence is just a belief. And many of us feel like we're not confident enough to go on camera. We're not confident to put ourselves out there online. But you don't need confidence in, in order to start. Confidence comes with, with taking those small steps, small, tiny steps out of your comfort zone. That's what's going to build your confidence and don't wait to have confidence before you do something you just have to have the courage to start and I know it's really easier said than done but taking those small steps out of our comfort zone is the only way that we're going to evolve and grow and it's it's normal to have the fear we all have the fear I always have the fear of doing something but I turn that to excitement it's not letting it control you turn it into excitement and think okay I'm scared of doing that but I'm learning along the way and if I take those small steps I'm going to grow and my, when you see someone that has confidence don't assume that they were born with it they've you know they've taken those steps out of their comfort zone so if you're waiting until when you are ready then you're probably not ever going to do it if you're waiting okay I'm going to wait to be confident then you're probably not going to do it. And you just have to remember that the confidence will eventually follow. I gained confidence from doing so many of these things out of my comfort zone. You know, I totally put myself out there online. And this is coming from someone that was such an introvert. I mean, I still have, I still am a bit of an introvert, but I'm a bit of both now. But before I was a total introvert. And there I was, it was all about me putting myself online. So I think it's important to remember that self-confidence comes from taking those small acts. So that is probably one of the thing, one of the main tips. Then obviously we fall into the comparison trap. We mm. all do. That's huge. A big one. And it's so much easier nowadays, isn't it? Because the digital, you know, you can compare yourself to anybody in the world virtually. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And and Online is great, but it has created so many insecurities. You know, um, we, we do look at what other people are doing. We can't help it. We compare ourselves, you know, oh, look, they're so much more successful than us. They're doing so much better. And we forget that they've also been on a journey. And when you look at someone successful, they've probably, it's probably taken them 10 or five years. You don't know. And you shouldn't compare your journey to theirs because you know you're on your own path so it's really easy though to fall victim to it and you see someone that's leading this lavish lifestyle and you're thinking wow look at them they're always happy but don't let appearances fool you because you know we can get caught up on the numbers game for example on social media but someone can who has maybe a hundred k followers can maybe feel really lonely we don't know that or someone who looks really happy in their relationship could, could be going through a problem. We don't know that. Someone who leads a lavish lifestyle, so we think, could be in debt. We don't know that. It's trying to realize that we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And everyone has a story. And especially with self-confidence, you know, they're probably not feeling confident doing certain things, but they just seem confident. 
it's because no one talks about it, you know? And I think it's important to take comfort knowing that you're not alone going through this. We all have our self-doubts. We all have our self, you know, self-belief issues. We just don't openly speak about it. And there's nothing wrong when you're feeling fearful. It, you know, I think there's this misconception. It's like, well, I'm confident. I'm not scared of, of doing anything. Look at me. And it's like, it's not true. Of course, you're going to be scared. When there's an opportunity that comes along, and you've never done it before. It's normal to be fearful. It's normal to have the fear. But then you're turn, it's trying to turn it into excitement and then learning from it. You've done it. You felt totally uncomfortable doing it. But afterwards, you're really happy that you have done it. And it brings up so many issues of feeling uncomfortable. But later on, you're going to be so thankful that you've done it because it's going to help you build that self-confidence. It's like doing your first live. I mean... Who doesn't dread that? I mean, I hated it so much. And it was really awful. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It really was. But I think that's also another problem. And this was for me as being a perfectionist. I wanted mm. everything to be perfect. And I really had to let go of that. And I had to remind myself, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And That's I so think, hard though, Ariana. I hard. totally relate to that. And I'm really trying to let things slip that just a little bit because I know that my perfectionism mm. is stopping me sometimes. I can relate as well because I was like that. Everything had to be perfect, but I wasn't doing anything. I realized I was stuck in this cycle of, okay. I really want to do that, but I'll try. And I prepared it and then it wasn't good enough and something was missing and something was missing and this was that. And this is the problem with being a perfectionist. You never pat yourself on the back. You never say, oh, I'm really happy. No, you think of what could have been done better. <laughs> and that's all that plan. you're laughing because you can relate <laughs> so much it's frightening <laughs> well I totally can relate because this is where I come from everything had to be perfect I've learned to let go in the last year so much and it takes again it, that's doing something out of your comfort zone is putting your, something out there that you don't think is perfect but I read the other day someone said if it's 70 percent good if it's 70 percent ready then do it it doesn't have to be a hundred percent because we all aim for a hundred percent but it's never going to be a hundred percent and so many times I would stop myself from doing things because it wasn't ready and I didn't do it and how was I going to grow if I didn't do that and you know you don't have to be great to start but start to be great and that quote has mm. been so important for me because I realized that's so true how, how do I expect to be really good at something if I'm not releasing it? I'm not trying because I just don't think I am, but I'm not going to grow. And I know it's the hardest thing, but we have to do, we have to come out of our comfort zone. It's the only way we're going to evolve. And sometimes, you know, we put so, such high, high expectations on ourselves, but people can relate to, to us more when we mess up when there's a hiccup, you know, I find myself, I relate to a lot of people when I see they share their vulnerabilities, they open up and things aren't perfect. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I still struggle with this, but I've learned a lot in the last year to let go. And I feel like now there's this sense of community and we can really help one another. And when something isn't perfect, we should just be able to laugh it off. We have to learn, I know, you will get better. It's like um, I'm going to share the challenge we had yesterday because we tried to record this yesterday and my I... Wi-Fi was not behaving. And um, so we kept on, I kept on dropping out my end. It had nothing to do with you. It was all my end. So it, I, you know, it's funny, but I thought this morning when I walked up to this office, if anybody could see the long Ethernet cable, which is going mm -hmm. from the camera and the computer all the way down the stairs and cool I've got rugs everywhere to try to make sure none of us neither of us trip over it um yeah that's the reality and I was like half of me is like maybe I should show that on stories on Instagram just so people know 
it's not perfect <laughs> far from perfect <laughs> definitely not and I think if we talk about it more I think we can you know so many people can relate to us and we can take comfort in knowing that we're not alone especially with with self-confidence you know when we talk about it with other people no one's really open about about it we always share our successes it's like when you go to an event or or a gathering and there's people there how are you doing everyone's like oh great you know I'm doing this I'm doing that and everyone's like wow we sound so successful no one's going to turn around and say oh, it's been really difficult I'm having difficulty with this I'm really struggling with this and it's been you know quite a hectic week no one says that but I think we should take comfort in knowing that we're all going through it and I think the, if we are more open about it and we speak about it then I think it will help one another to realize I'm not alone so it's okay there's that balance though isn't there because I think I'm very conscious on, on when I'm putting stuff out online I always want to be upbeat and positive because there mm. are some people who I, I no longer follow um, on mm. online who are, are just really the whole time I feel like there's a low energy oh, yeah. and they're always complaining so I think you just have to find that balance don't you think yeah I'm I think it's important to find that balance and I think you need to be open but I think if someone's doing it constantly then they're obviously not in a very good place and that's when they will probably need some help and and that's probably their way of asking for help if they're constantly doing it on online for attention mm, they're, they're probably yearning for it but they don't have the courage to ask for help I have noticed that pattern I think people that do it right with a balance is 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 different so like you do it yourself you'll show maybe the things that aren't going well and the things that are going well but people if they're constantly showing the things that aren't going well that it's their their cry out for help probably that's I a really assume. good point really good point my my mum once um, <clears throat> told me um empty vessels make the most noise as in yeah. you know people that need help mm -hmm. sometimes you know but we're all different aren't we we're all different and it's interesting point it's a bit like with confidence there's this misconception that if you're loud and you're bold and you're flashy you're super confident and if you're an introvert you're not well actually you can be either you can be an introvert and be extremely confident you can be an extrovert and be extremely confident but I've known a lot of extroverts for example which show that they're confident but they're really not they're battling self-doubts and it's their cover up their way of covering up so appearances you know we we get we get it wrong. We don't know what that person is going through. So that's something that's really important to, to take note. So how would you um, define the difference between an extrovert and an introvert then? Well, an introvert likes their own company. Um, and it depends because there's different levels of introvert. There's someone that likes their own company, someone that really hates big crowds, doesn't hates the idea of going to social gatherings but then there's someone that just doesn't mind them but prefers their own company and then an extrovert is someone that loves socializing loves being around people and there's no right or wrong they're both great it's what works for you I used to be a real introvert when I was younger I, you know I was very shy and but once I found growing up once I found my crowd my core cool friends then I wasn't so much of an introvert, but now I find myself being a bit of both. I have this balance, but again, there's no right or wrong. We can be introverts, but still be confident. We can be extroverts, still be confident. There's no, you should do this. You should do that. You've got to be true to yourself. And if you want time for yourself, then that's, that's quite fine. And if you don't feel like hanging out with certain people at a certain time, then say no. Don't feel like you always have to say yes if it's, if it's not right for you. So let's talk more, uh, more about confidence in relation to not feeling good enough and um, the whole imposter syndrome scenario. What advice would you give to a small business owner who, who 
just doesn't feel that they're good enough and you know who are they to sell this service or create this product who are they to think that somebody would be interested well imposter syndrome i mean it does affect the majority of us it's a known fact um it's when you're you're feeling like a fraud you're not feeling good enough or you just don't believe in yourself but it can creep up in so many different ways it's not just about feeling like a fraud it can creep up in we spoke about being a perfectionist um it can that's a few points there it can also creep up on thinking you want to learn something you want to be the best at something straight away so you're very harsh on yourself it can creep up being a soloist in the sense you will never ask help from anyone you are like, okay, I'm going to do this on my own. A, you don't want to burden anyone else. B, you're like, you know, I can do this. And it's also not being able to say no and carrying on doing things that can be the detriment of your health. If you carry on, you sometimes need to know how to set up boundaries. It creeps up in so many different ways. The fear, the fear of failing, the fear of being judged, of comparing yourself, which I, you know, all points which I, I touched on. So again, I mentioned before, and this is a really important point to take comfort in knowing that you're not alone. You know, entrepreneurs, successful people, actresses, they all suffer from imposter syndrome. A lot of them, not all, a lot of them. For example, <laughs> there's famous quotes, I think from Kate Winslet saying that sometimes she'll go in a photo shoot, but she'll feel like a fraud. And that's Kate Winslet. And, you know, we're all human. So it, it can creep up in many of us. And I spoke to you before how we don't share, you know, things that we're scared of or things that we're not good at or we're, we're worried that we're not good at. We don't share that. We just talk about our successes. So take comfort in knowing that you're not alone. And I mentioned in order to build self-confidence, you need to take those steps out of your comfort zone. So putting yourself out online if you think it's going to benefit your business, which let's be honest, nowadays, digital has a huge impact on our business. And if that's the direction you want to go, then you that is going to be something you'll have to do. And I know it feels uncomfortable, but taking that first step is going to help you to improve your self-confidence. Because if your brand is you, if it's hard because people need to warm up to a brand and that's really important and you, you've got to put yourself out there but you can choose what you put you are in control don't assume that you have to do what other people are doing you know this is your chance to be you and to be authentic to your brand to be unique and to really you know follow your values follow your core values and and just do that and you will feel better about it never try to conform to being something else or someone else because you're comparing yourself to someone you know your superpower is you and it's true it's what makes you unique so you might think oh there's so many brands out there that's similar to me no they're not because what's unique about your brand is you so show that uniqueness and I feel like once you start you'll feel really good about yourself. It's daunting at first, but you will feel better. And, and it takes practice. You know, None of us were, were doing lives. None of us were doing videos. None of us were using <laughs> Instagram. And all of a sudden, it's all like out there. And you do get used to it, funny enough. And it just takes time. And I feel we're really scared of failing. That's the thing as well. We're putting ourselves out there and we're, we're scared of of failing and I actually hate that word failure because I think we should try and see it I'm not saying it should be a positive thing but if we look back at our journey there have been so many times where obviously things haven't turned out the way we wanted it to but we've learned so much from that you know it's made us stronger it's made us more resilient and we've learned to okay well it didn't work out that way so perhaps I can implement it in a different way I can learn something from it and there's this life coach which I really really like his name is Rich Lipman and he once said um, the safety is the enemy of success be proud of your mistakes take risks fail spectacularly 
and then go out and fail some more. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't have failed? And I think we put, again, being a perfectionist or wanting everything to be perfect, we put so much pressure on ourselves. But we need to, we have to think, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. And sometimes it's not as bad as what you've created in your head. Sometimes it's actually, when you put it down to paper, you're like, on paper, you're like, oh, okay, well, that's the worst that can happen. So I can always think of a way that I can improve if that happens. It's about reframing, reframing our, our thoughts, which is really, really important. So sometimes we need to start seeing rejection as, as guidance. And then perhaps we have nothing to fear. We'll always fear, but we'll still have that courage in, in taking that chance. And I think courage always comes before confidence. And I don't think I know it. And I think that's really, really important. Always have the courage. The fear will always be there, but don't let it control you. Have the courage to really go for it. And you, what can you lose? You will only gain and learn from that experience. That's probably my key points, I would say. Can you share the kind of successes your clients um, have had, Ariana? Wow. Um, well, it's definitely a transformational journey. Um, life coaching it it's very hard sometimes I try and explain it into a post but that's why my testimonials are fundamental because they can really tell you the change so I have clients that really suffer they suffered from self-doubt and they were in a very I had this one particular client she was in a really bad place didn't believe in herself she wasn't taking any action and working together after just one session sometimes you tend to see everyone's different but you do tend to see a shift after the first session and she was just putting herself out there she was starting to believe herself in herself she was starting to change her mindset into a better place into switching it shifting it from a negative mindset she just started to have this self-confidence that she really believed in herself. And it's funny because every time I work with a client at the end of the journey, their success story is like amazing in the sense they their business is going really well. They they're doing things like I see some of my clients now after a year, one of my clients, she's doing amazing online. Her business is booming. Um, and it's all because they just followed through what they knew was right for them. They followed their passion, their heart, and they didn't let, let self-confidence stop them. They had the courage. And I think it's working a lot on their mindset. It's using NLP tools, CBT tools to help them because something sometimes at the back of us are limiting beliefs. That's it. That is what's stopping us. So it's working through that and realizing it's all in our thoughts that's the one thing you can control is our thoughts and it takes a lot of practice but if you start becoming aware of your thoughts and really realizing that your thoughts affect your feelings and they will trigger your actions and there's you can't control the, the circumstance or the situation around you you know like the weather you can't control that. Or the pandemic Exactly. The pandemic is a huge one. You can't, you, you couldn't control that, but what can you control are your thoughts. And it, it's impossible not to have negative thoughts. I don't want to give this illusion. No, get rid of the negative thoughts. No, you have the negative thoughts. We all do. We're human. It's about embracing those negative thoughts. And sometimes we need to release those emotions. If you want to have a cry, have a cry. Don't suppress them. That's the worst thing you could do, but it's learning how to navigate through it it's learning how to say okay let me be aware of my negative thought it's there how can I reframe my thinking how can I switch this around if I'm starting to think I don't know how to do that okay I don't know how to do that yet what actions can I take in order to be better what can I do to improve and already your feelings the triggers towards your feelings will be a bit more positive had it been, I can't do that. 
And then when you start to feel a bit better about yourself, that's when you take positive action. That's when you take action. And that's the only way you can move forward. If you're in that cycle where you're not feeling good and your thoughts are not feeling good, but you don't try and change them around, that's where it becomes difficult for you to move forwards. And we all do it, but it's learning how to navigate from it. So before we go on to your three tips, Ariana, what's your favorite part now of being, you describe yourself as a transformational courage and confidence coach. What's your favorite part? Oh, I just love empowering women. I love. It's the only women you normally coach. Yes, I'm only coaching women. I mean, that's my niche. Um, I'm very passionate about empowering women because I know from experience how self-confidence can really stop us from moving forward. And I meet so many talented women, so many talented women that don't know it. And I just want them to build the self-belief, to really realize how talented they are how amazing they are and it just it's just so inspiring to be able to be in the presence of these women and then to that for them to walk away having that self-belief and having that courage to go forwards and leading the life that they really dream about because a lot of our mental programming comes from when we were younger or from even incidents that maybe happened a year ago or two years ago and we you know, we believe that we're not good enough because of what society has fed us or what people have said about us. And then it just becomes normal for us to think that. But once we can break away from that, great things can happen. And I've seen it. And I think that is definitely why I love my job so much because it's just so nice to be able to give that back. And coming from a place where I've been there, I can totally relate to so it's funny because I used to struggle with being sensitive being an empath but this has helped me so much I see these as traits now because it has helped me so much in being a coach and you know you are grown up to think well if you're sensitive you can't be strong you can't be confident you're not going to be successful you know someone told me that when I was younger and I was too sensitive and you kind of believe that when people feed it to you but now I realize these are traits of mine and they've been so fundamental in being a coach that um, it's been fantastic. And I think we need to learn to embrace things that people say, you know, our, our uniqueness. People have said things about you, but try and think, well, these are actually talents of mine. So let's embrace our uniqueness. We don't have to be like everyone else. No, absolutely not. So what are your three tips that you'd like to leave people with? Okay, so I probably have mentioned these already because we've spoken about so much. (laughs) Recap them. Okay, so take action. Don't believe that you need to be confident in order to do something. You have an idea, you want to launch something, do it. Take those uncomfortable steps out of your comfort zone. You want to start being present online, start doing it. Confidence is only going to grow by doing the things that make you feel uncomfortable. And it's normal to have the fear, but don't let it rule you because if you do, you're not going to grow. Your business won't grow. And in order for your business to grow, you have to take those steps out of your comfort zone. If we're too complacent doing the same thing, we're not going to evolve. We're not going to grow. And it does take time. I know it's not easy, but... Just start taking those small steps, small steps. It could be anything. You've been avoiding maybe writing that email, contacting someone. Take those small steps out of your comfort zone and watch yourself grow. The fear, don't don't be fooled by things and the fear won't be there. It will always be there, but learn to navigate it. Learn to not let it control you. So I would say that is probably the biggest tip. Mm -hmm. And The second tip, again, is comparison. And I think that's a real important one because with online now, with social media, we're always going to be comparing ourselves to one another. And I think, again, everyone has a story. Everyone can look really confident, but probably lacks in self-confidence, just like us. So take comfort in knowing you're not alone. We all have our own story 
and you are unique the way you are, like I mentioned before, don't think, oh, well, there's another, you know, how many life coaches are there? I would have <laughs> Quite <did>. a few. <laughs> Especially, I feel like there's so many lately as well. And so if I look at every single successful life coach, if I start comparing myself, which, you know, I did at the beginning, it's normal. I wouldn't have carried on. And I realized what is unique about me? It's me. It's my voice. It's me. It's, it's the way I coach, the way I interact. And I want you to feel the same. And it's just remember that everyone is sharing a filtered and edited version of themselves. And it's, you know, it's not necessarily, no one's going to share their, their horrible bits about their business. It's very rare. So just remember that. And you're on your own journey. Do it at your own pace. What feels right for you? This is about authenticity. This is about not conforming to anyone else. Do what feels right for you. Follow your heart, your aligned you know, path. I really believe in that. It's when I realized I wanted to be a life coach, I, I just knew 100% this is what I wanted to do. So if you know what you want to do, then, then follow your passion and, and spend time doing the things improving yourself you know we we can only grow so I think that's really really important and realize that perfection doesn't exist and the sooner you'll be able to accept that it just takes time but it'll be really beneficial for you and probably another the third point is embrace failing (gasps) but see it as a positive in the sense I'm not saying you you should have a failing business I'm saying certain things will never work out Mm -hmm. life is not upwards that I mean if we thought if we think life would is up life is upwards then then we're wrong and we're gonna it's gonna lead to us being not feeling great about ourselves we have to realize it's up and down it will always be like that but it's learning to embrace those moments saying, okay, this is what happened. What can I do to change it? What can I do to improve it? And it's part of being a business owner. It's part of being an entrepreneur. It's part of of growing. It's, you know, when you look at stories, you know, Richard Branson or all that, I mean, so many failures, yet so many successes as well. So I think it's important to realize that and, take note that you're learning as well so and don't wait to start something thinking it has to be perfect just do it and you will get better and better and better and I think that's really important so it's a bit like this is quite important when you think of an athlete you know they have to lose in order to learn how to win so they have to make mistakes in order to get better. So I think if you start thinking like this, the word failure can actually leave your vocabulary and think, okay, well, it's not that I failed. I just didn't, it didn't go according to plan. So let's do it better next time. So I think that's probably another important point, I would say. That's so funny that you mention athletes because when you mentioned Richard Branson, it reminded me of a documentary I watched about Usain Bolt. Mm. And I don't know if you've seen it, but have you seen it? No, I haven't, but I do. Oh, love- it's so interesting. A couple of years ago, and um, it showed him training and training and training. And then the months and months and months he had off because he was injured and you just never heard of that no you know all you hear about in the media was Usain has run this race yes. of fastest seven many a man has run mm. and and but you just don't see generally the what goes on behind the scenes it's incredibly imp- really interesting yeah and we just see the successes we just think it comes easy but mm, there's a lot of work behind that it's, and I find that fascinating because we do tend to forget that because again, we just see his successes. We don't see the grueling hours, the everything he's he's been through, and then the injuries that come along. You know, being an athlete is is just amazing. Everything they put into it, and we don't see that though. We just see when they win. Then he comes on. You know, a few seconds, he does his little pose. <laughs> yeah. So it's 
it is fascinating. So I think yeah. if we start thinking about these things and just opening our mind a little and just shifting our mindset, I think they can really help us, especially because it can be a lonely place when you're in a business on your own. And that's why I think community is really, really important. And if you're surrounded, I always say your tribe, because you always attract your people, surround them, surround yourself with those people and really really get the most out of it because it is fundamental to be around people you need it's hard when you're working on your own so you need to bounce off ideas with other people you need to share ideas you need to be enthusiastic and knowing that you're not alone and sharing your struggles is really really important Thank you so much, Ariana. I feel like I've had a coaching session just chatting to you. <laughs> good. I hope I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed it. I am very passionate about this and I could speak about it all, all day. So where can people find you online, Ariana? Oh, well, you can find me on my website at uh, arianatrapani.com. You can sign up to my newsletter. I would really love that. Um, and You'll also, I think if you sign on my newsletter, you'll get a free workbook as well. So that's always fun, a little bonus. And find me online. You know, I'm very present on social media, Instagram at ariana.trapani. And I share, you know, as much value as I can. Um, yeah, your Instagram posts are really oh, like thanks. little blog posts, mini blog posts sometimes, aren't they? Yes, I it's my way because not everyone can work get you know works with me on, on a one to one basis but so it's my way of trying to add as much value as i can and giving back as much as i can obviously you know when we work one to one it goes a bit more deeper than what i put but i try and touch on on you know topics that i know is what affects us you know on self confidence and courage and and running a business it's it's so difficult you know I don't assume for it to be easy but I feel like knowing that we're not alone is such an important aspect of it all and I think it gives us the courage to move forward and I know I've had so many women come you know write to me and say thanks for your post I'm doing this and they're on this journey and they always say it was thanks to you and I don't, I'm not trying to take credit for that. What I'm trying to say is like, sometimes we just need that one person to say something that can really shift us. And I think if we start all being vocal and really, you know, pushing one another, really supporting one another, being our cheerleaders, it can really, really help us to progress. I think that's really important. Lovely. What a lovely way to finish. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much and good luck with the rest of the year. I know you're based in Italy at the moment, aren't you? And yes, so based in Italy. I'm hoping to come back to London soon for a quick visit, but that will probably be after the summer. But I have a few exciting projects in the pipeline. It's now trying to figure out which comes first and so trying to be organised. But yeah, a few exciting things coming out, which I'm very, very excited about. Great. Great. Okay. Well, have a lovely rest of your day. And thank you so much for all your advice today. Oh, thank you, Rona, so much for having me. This has been lovely and have a great day as well. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed my interview with Ariana. It was so lovely to catch up with her and hear all her amazing advice about confidence, overcoming fear and comparison, imposter syndrome. We covered quite a lot, didn't we? Um, so I hope you found her advice useful and put some of those tips into action. And um, yeah, remember to really embrace failure and just know that sometimes you're gonna feel that fear, but just to, as Nike says, just do it anyway. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you again next Tuesday.